It's always a good idea to meet someone first before you commit. This is your spooky spot on the Jada Toys Universal Monsters, The Bride of Frankenstein. The Universal Monsters have finally been made into 6-inch scale figures. Jada presents the Bride of Frankenstein figure based on the classic 1935 film. She is fully articulated and comes with interchangeable heads and several accessories. I guess this is a case where the Bride literally has cold feet. I'm here all day. For some size comparisons, I've previously looked at Jada Toys Universal Monsters. Let's bring in first Dracula, who's a little bit taller than the Bride of Frankenstein. And then just recently, we also had a look at Frankenstein's monster himself. Who, as you can see, is a lot taller than the two figures. Again, we're only getting four figures in this wave so far. The last figure we're, we are going to be looking at, I'm sure you guys already know, will be the creature from the Black Lagoon. But I certainly hope that Jada Toys expands this line beyond the four figures that we're getting and getting other characters, maybe like even the Wolfman, for example. The figure does not too bad in the accessory department. We'll have a look at those right now. Starting first, she comes with a couple of electrical rods. Actually, this one here is rod and this one here is Todd. That's a terrible joke. They seem almost similar to one another, except for when you look at the base. The bases are slightly different from one another. They don't connect together. In fact, I would probably just be displaying them on either side of the bride. She does also have these little straps of fabric that drape down from the tops of the rods. And she does have real chains. Though again, I feel like the chains are plastic and not necessarily metal. Still, the fact that we do get ourselves real working chains is always a nice touch. I always appreciate when companies do that. You can really take then the rods and put them on either side of the bride, like that. She also comes in clue with a couple of swappable hands as well. Now, these hands look like they should be holding something. I guess technically you could take the chains and feed them inside the hands so she's actually holding the chains, but it definitely looks like she should be holding something. Or I guess you could consider them to be gestured hands as well. One little touch of detail I appreciate is that Jada Toys have this little strap of fabric that drapes down from the hand. It's subtle, it's small, but I appreciate the fact that they would have included that. You can take the hands that are currently in the sockets and you can easily remove them. Just go ahead and wiggle the hands and remove the pegs. And I have to say, I may, may have even mentioned that when we had a look at Frankenstein, that the hands are very easy to remove. Go ahead and put that hand in first. And we'll do the exact same thing on the other side as well. I mean, granted, you could keep this hand in place, but just to show you what it looks like, I'm going to wiggle this hand out just like that. Super, super easy too. Just wiggle, 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 pop that right out. And then we're going to replace it then with this hand here. Again, if you want to, I suppose you could feed the chains in between the hands, but these also serve as just more like gestured hands as well. The figure also includes, let's move Rod and Todd out of the way. The figure also comes included with a swappable head sculpt too. And I guess for now I can show you the, the two so you can see the difference between the two. One is definitely after she's realized who her husband's going to be. She has a more shrieking look on her face. Uh, resemblance to the late actress Elsa Lanchester, I guess, is sort of there. I think Elsa actually had a, had a slightly more elongated, narrower face, but it's pretty good. Uh, the neck seems a little on the shorter side when you compare it, but, you know, when it comes to Bride of Frankenstein figures, they always te seem to be cursed. There's always something that's really wrong with them. And, you know, as things, as things go with this release from Jada Toys, I'm actually pretty happy with this one. The fact that she does have a longer dress, we'll talk more about in a second. But again, there's the two different head sculpts with the notable bride feature of the very long looking hair on the back. I've always, liked, I've always really liked Bride of Frankenstein more than Frankenstein when it comes to Universal Monster movies. It's always the movie I pop in first before I watch the original Frankenstein. I have a little bit of paint there on the side of her cheek. And it seems like there's a little bit also there on the end of her nose. But if you want to see what it looks like to swap the heads out, simply just hold on to the torso and wiggle the head off the ball joint. Again, super easy to remove. Go ahead and take the now replacement head and pop that onto the ball joint. And again, you can get that classic look where she's looking up. You got to think that Frankenstein, talk about already low self-esteem, and she looks over at him and starts shrieking. That's got to do a number for him. And that's what the head sculpt looks like. And again, one last time, the difference between the two. 
Could these have worked, say, as black and white releases? Absolutely. I hope that's down the road an option, something that they're considering to do. I would love to see these figures released as black and white versions. Although, I mean, really looking at the Bride of Frankenstein here, she has really the least amount of color of the figures that we've looked at so far. I'm going to put that head sculpt down. And of course, we'll look at the rest of the figure's body. Love again, the head sculpt. I just wish there wasn't paint there on the side of her face. I can't imagine it's across the border and all the figures, probably just mine, luckily. Yeah, pretty happy with that face. Now again, she does have the longer dress. The material that they used has a little bit of elasticity to it. And you can actually lift up the dress. Hold on, perverts, hold on. And then you can actually see she's got a bandaged body underneath it. Now, keeping in mind as well, Jada Toys, for all intents and purposes, could have just left an unfinished body underneath all this. So technically, if you wanted to, you could remove the head, which I guess we can kind of do right now. And I guess you could for all intents and purposes, take the dress right off. It will involve me, of course, bring the arms up like that. And just, we can remove it all completely in its entirety. So if you want to just have like a mummified looking body for the bride, you can do that as well. Just bring the arms back down. It's going to look a little out of place, of course, without a head. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Pop that in place. And you can certainly see the level of detail that they actually sculpted into the body. My guess is that they probably used a beige colored plastic. Yeah, you can see right there with the pegs. And then they brushed over top of it the white. So you can see the two different tone effects happening here. And a lot more of the texturing showing on the bandages. Again, a nicely sculpted looking body. Even the back of the body actually is quite nice. A nice form that they've given her. They even also sculpted where they've got the bandages wrapped around her feet, similar to the movie. Flat at least enough on the bottom, so it doesn't mean that the figure's going to be t wobbling back and forth. If they had sculpted the bottom of the treads as well, that would be where that problem would happen. But luckily, because they made the feet nice and flat, when it comes to her standing, short of you just adjusting the ankles a little bit, Bride of Frankenstein doesn't seem to have too many of a problem, too much of a problem at least, getting her to actually stand upright. Suppose as well it helps to actually have the dress off because it's a lot easier looking at the articulation on the figure. So for the Bride of Frankenstein, her head rotates all the way around. It hinges, well, up a little bit, not much, down. And you can also rock it back and forth. As for the shoulders, the shoulders come out. Now she wouldn't have had this problem anyways with the dress in place because the dress would have only been here, right? Right? So you can give her an easy to very comfortable 90 degree angle bend. You can rotate the arms all the way around. She has a swivel cut in the bicep, which allows then the arm to rotate all the way around. Now she has a hinge joint and it's sort of weird to find where the joint is. You kind of have to rotate, rotate it the right way to make sure you got the elbow bend happening here. Luckily, again, the arms are visible even when she's wearing the dress. So you can easily see where that joint is. Cause if not, you might actually start trying to bend it the opposite way. And there is a technically a little bit of wiggle back and forth too. So, Depending on, I mean, I guess you really could have it this way too and hinge it this way. So I guess it doesn't really matter which way you've got the elbow bent. The hands rotate all the way around. Still love that little band just draping down like this. And the hands also wiggle back and forth. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Upper torso is on a ball joint. The lower waist doesn't have a swivel cut or anything like that. But the legs at least split out. You can bring the legs forward and back up the thigh about three quarters of the way is a swivel cut right there she has double hinge on the knee and then when it comes to the feet they also move back and forth and ankle pivot them i appreciate the fact that when it came to the release of this figure i don't want to use the term phoning it in but they could have easily just left the figure's body unfinished unmolded underneath but jada toys didn't do that they actually had it with the intended plan that if in given point a reviewer like myself behind the camera or some collector at home decided to take the dress off, at least they actually sculpted the body underneath to be finished and complete. Is there an actual waist swivel? It almost looks like there's a waist swivel right there. Maybe there's not. Maybe it's just, I think it's the bandage playing tricks on me. It almost looks like she's got a swivel cut right there. But anyways, though, when it certainly comes to displaying this figure, I'm more inclined to display her with the dress because it's more iconic, I feel, than having her with a bandaged body. But again, I appreciate the fact that Jada Toys would have released this figure with a finished body underneath, just in case you decide to take the dress off. And again, we'll just get the figure to stand. I have made even the joke of saying that the figure had had no difficulty standing, but again, you kind of have to get the feet just right. Or really as well, you can also use a display stand. Even though these figures don't come included with display stands, you can easily use a display stand from another figure line. 
Now it's so funny that she doesn't stand. There we go. There we go. And one last look as well. We can also bring in her husband. There's Frankenstein's monster. Regret. Regret is probably what was on her face. Poor Frankenstein's self-esteem. And there's Dracula as well. The three figures so far, the four figure releases of the Jada Toys Universal Monsters. The only figure, of course, we still have to lo still look at is the Creature from the Black Lagoon. His review will be coming up shortly after this one. Final looks of the figure. One thing I do want to mention about the Bride of Frankenstein, as you'll probably see in a second, as she spins around the rotisserie around the back of the figure, she actually does have a Velcro closure on the back of her dress. In the review, I pop the head off to take the dress off, but you really don't even need to do that. Just unvelcro the back of the dress and slide it over her shoulders, and you can take the dress off. Again, I love the fact that Jada Toys did sculpt the body underneath, so if you did want to take off the dress, you could. I don't think that's been the case with every Bride of Frankenstein figure that's been in the market over the last couple of years. Sometimes they leave unfinished bodies underneath it, with really the intended plan that you're never going to be taking the dress off. Not Jada Toys, though. They nicely sculpted the body underneath. Well done. In this case as well, I feel it's a continuation of Frankenstein's monster in the sense that I do want to use the swappable head sculpt, I think, instead of the head sculpt that's stock with the figure when you take her first out of her plastic prison. I like the idea of her shrieking, which only adds then to the self-esteem of poor Frankenstein. You can imagine he's just hoping to have a new bride, someone to love him in life. And the first reaction she has when she sees him is shrieking of terror. That's going to be the way I'm going to display the figure, shrieking in terror. A nice, again, release from the folks over at Jada Toys. This now wraps up, well, at least three of the four figures that we're going to be having a look at. The last figure in this set is the Creature from the Black Lagoon. I'm really looking forward to seeing how that one's going to look like outside of packaging. Have you picked up any of the new Jada Toys Universal Monsters? If you have, let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think of them or based on this review and this review alone. Uh, also, if you guys are new to this channel and enjoying the content you're seeing, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on. And yes, please, keep those ghoulish peepers of yours peeled, because not only are we going to be looking at more of the universe monsters with the creature from the Black Lagoon, but there are also more spookerific reviews coming your way in the not-so-distant future. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.